Hey folks, Will Brink here, www.brinkzone.com, and uh, today I want to cover soy protein. Uh, I've covered soy in a pretty lengthy article on the Brink Zone, but it's older now, so I guess it might be a little outdated, though I have to say my, my general conclusions haven't changed that much. Uh, the issue with soy is actually fairly complicated. So if you think there is a definitive uh, position on soy, soy is bad for men, soy is good for men, what have you, you don't know soy because there are a number of conflicting studies. And they're conflicting because the human body, uh, male human physiology is complicated. It's just, it's, that's not a matter of uh, take soy, find this exact effect every single time. Uh, some studies find uh, an association between soy and lower testosterone levels, some don't. Uh, I think the general take home, if you look at what is known as the bulk of the data, that is most studies most of the time, the general conclusion for soy for men is some soy in moderation is perfectly fine. Uh, at the same time, I wouldn't recommend that a man make it his sole source of protein or a, a large portion of his protein intake, but the bottom line is uh, soy follows the three D's, and that's drug, dosage, and duration. Anything you're going to have problems with comes down to those three issues. And the isoflavones, the soy-based estrogens, or the plant-based estrogens in soy, at high enough doses for long enough periods of time may be an issue to men, but it's clear that uh, you know some tofu in your diet, an occasional scoop or two of soy in a protein drink here and there is just not going to do you any harm. So unless people can get outside of the mindset of good, bad, black, white, uh, they're going to be confused about soy. Because soy is one of those where there's just not a, it's not a good guy, bad guy situation. If your specific goal is keeping your testosterone levels elevated, it's probably from the data that exists, I don't recommend men take in a large portion of protein in their diet from soy, especially a highly concentrated soy protein powders where they purposely uh, increase the soy isoflavone content. Again, we're not talking about a little bit of tempeh or a little bit of tofu, that type of thing. It's just not going to do you any harm. So this is one of those areas where, again, if you can't get out of a, a black and white type thinking, you're going to be confused. You're going to see one study that says this, you're going to see a nice says that, and you're just going to not, not, not know what to make of soy. At the end of the day, I mean, soy is not a particularly high quality protein in my view. If you're a vegetarian, then okay, use soy. If you're not, then whey, casein, egg, chicken are all better choices in my view anyway, so there's really no purpose to it. If you are, again, a vegetarian and you have limited choices of protein content, then use soy. Uh, again, I personally would not make it a, a large percentage of my protein intake for those reasons, but I, didn't, I don't think anybody should freak out about their soy intake and get all worried that I had a scoop of soy last month and all my testosterone levels must have crashed and so on. So again, don't, don't let the hype, the stuff that you see both pro and con get you all worked up about soy. The, obviously the, the truth, the answer is usually somewhere right in the middle and I uh, hope this info helps. Uh, go to Brink Zone if you want to get sort of a more in-depth uh, article as far as the, what the actual research says. And if this helped, please hit the you know, likes and the Twitters and I'll see you all on the Brink Zone.